Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Currently there has been a lot of controversy regarding the US decision about adopting the new 6.8 by 51 cartridge also called 277 Fury. They have also adopted a new rifle known as the M5 or 6 Spear which is itself based on the 6 MCX. Let us examine the reason why gun enthusiasts around the world are talking about this change. At the onset of World War II, most of the world's militaries were equipped with the most powerful rifle cartridge. An infantryman could comfortably shoot. The Americans had 3006 Springfield. The British Empire, which include UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and British India, used the 303 British. The Germans had the 7.92 by 57 mm Mosser. The Russians had the oldest cartridge, 7.62 by 54R, which is probably the oldest rim fired rifle cartridge still in use. During the war, the Germans realized that their cartridges were overpowered and they did not need such a powerful rifle cartridge. For this reason, the German military developed the 7.92 by 33 Kurtz round. Kurtz meaning shot in German. This was an intermediate cartridge which meant that although it was shorter than a standard rifle round but larger than pistol caliber ammo. For this, they also developed the STG-44 Stungwehr or Assault Rifle, thus the first assault rifle was born. The German word Stearns mean assault, hence all modern assault lifers own their origin to the STG-44. Stormtroopers also get their name from the German word Stern. The Russians, who had to do most of the fighting with the Germans, on the Eastern Front during World War II also saw the immediately the advantage of the shorter German Kurtz round from captured STG-44s. For this reason, the Russians developed their own intermediate cartridge, the 762 by 39 after World War II. For this round, they also developed the infamous AK-47 and SKS assault rifles. The British had also arrived at the same conclusions as the Russians had regarding rifle cartridge caliber. For this, they developed the EM2 Bullpop, also called as a Jensen rifle, rifle chambered for the new 280 British cartridge. During this time, the Belgians were also developing a new rifle. Belgian's company FN had developed the FNFAL rifle. The Belgians too initially chambered their FNFAL in the 280 British cartridge. The British adopted the Jensen rifle, replacing the venerable 303 infield rifles they had been using for past 50 years. But alas, this adoption was short-lived. This was the time NATO alliance was taking shape. Another lesson learned during World War II was that if NATO allies were to fight another war in the future against the Soviets and her allies, they needed some standard equipment to increase interoperability. During World War II, the British, American and French militaries had completely different rifles and ammo. This created a logistical nightmare at the front lines. To overcome this, NATO leaders agreed that they should all at least adopt the same service rifle chambered in the same round or bullet. In 1950, rifle trials were held in US at the Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. The British bought their Jensen rifle and the Belgians bought their FNFAL, as mentioned before, chambered in the 280. The Americans also bought their prototype T25 rifle. This T25 was chambered in 30 caliber round called the 308 Manchester. This cartridge, although smaller than the World War II era, rounds were ballistically similar to them. In the trial, the American rifle proved to be the worst of performers. 
result of this trial was that the americans said they would not accept an intermediate cartridge they wanted a full size 30 caliber cartridge the british did their best to convince the americans to adopt the 280 cartridge one of the biggest opponents of the adoption of the 280 was the us colonel rennie stadler who was head of the us small arms bureau he not only hated the 280 cartridge and the bullpup design but was also of the idea that any firearm not american would be a waste of time The British on the other hand tried to make the 280 ballistically similar to the 308 Winchester. In 1951 the British finally adopted the Jensen rifle as their standard issue rifle. Americans once again made it clear that they would not settle with anything less than 30 caliber meaning 762. During this time Churchill was re-elected as the Prime Minister of Britain. He decided to make his American cousins happy and he agreed to the Americans demand that all of NATO should adopt an American made 30 caliber cartridge. So he made British military unadopt the Jensen rifle. The Belgians too rechambered their FNFAL rifle to accommodate the 308 Winchester every nato partner ended up adopting the fnfal chambered in 308 nato the 308 round was renamed the 762 nato round after the adoption of the fnfal by nato this rifle became known as the right arm of the free world in british commonwealth countries the fnfal was renamed as the FNSLR The European NATO partners believe that this since they have adopted an American cartridge the US will adopt the FNFAL2 as they had said so but to their utter dismay American adopted the M14 which was basically an improved iteration of their World War 2 era M1 Garand rifle but chambered in the new 762 NATO fast forward to the Vietnam war era here the Cumberson M14 first time saw action the soldier found the rifle heavy and difficult to handle during the jungle combat of Vietnam it was then the US military realized that they need an intermediate cartridge the US air force already had adopted the M16 assault rifle for its ground troops The M16 was chambered for the 556 by 45 round. Since the US Air Force troops were not frontline troops, they did not need to adopt a rifle with a full power round that was in service with the army. After seeing the Air Force adopt the M16, the US Army evaluated it and found it would be very useful in the jungles of Vietnam. Thus the M16 and the benefits of an intermediate cartridge were finally realized by the US Army. The M16 was well liked by the US troops in Vietnam for its lightweight, low recoil and ability to carry more ammo. On the other hand, the M14 became the weapon which was the US Army standard issue rifle for the shortest duration. After seeing the Americans adopt the 556 by 45 cartridge other nato partners too started re-equipping their armies with the new intermediate cartridge from the late 70s to the early 90s almost all nato countries and other major us allies had adopted a rifle which was chambered for the 556 by 45 this round became the 556 nato the pakistan had too adopted the 762 nato cartridge along with the german g3 rifle in the early 1960s during early 2000s with the start of war on terror there was talk about pakistan changing its g3 rifle with something chambered for the 556 nato but the pakistani military never felt the need because firstly it was primarily 
trained to fight an enemy coming from the plains of Punjab or the third desert. Here, the G3 had a distinct advantage over 556 NATO chambered rifles. Secondly, and more importantly, the cost of re-equipping the entire Pakistani army with a new rifle would be a few billion dollars. This kind of money can fetch a squadron of latest fighter jets. So Pakistan felt no urgency to re-equip itself with the 556 NATO although the FN Scar L was seriously considered. During the war in Afghanistan, the Americans found their M4 carbines, shortened M16, seriously outlast in the mountain terrain. They once again felt the need for a powerful cartridge that could hit targets at long ranges. They once again started a trial to replace their M4s and selected the 6 spear as the M5 rifle. It is this selection that has taken everyone by surprise, especially the adoption of the 277 Fury cartridge. Although this cartridge is smaller than the 762, NATO but is ballistically superior. The question that arises from this adoption is, has the US forgotten its own lessons from the Vietnam? The US defends this accusation by arguing that it considering the recent Russian invasion of Ukraine and China threatening Taiwan, it foresees a conflict with either China or Russia. Here unlike during earlier periods, the M5 equipped with a good scope. Soldiers will have better probability of hitting their targets at long distances. Secondly, Chinese and Russian soldiers will be mostly equipped bulletproof vest which will be harder to penetrate for 556 NATO round. The acquisition may take up to a year or to equip the entire US Army. Now the question I will like to ask my viewers are is this the right decision taken by the US military? Will America's NATO allies to re-equip their infantry with the M5 and the new cartridge? What implications does this acquisition have for the Pakistani army? Please leave a comment as usual and like and subscribe.